Good evening and welcome along to the second episode this week of Red Tinted Glasses. Some may say it's a new dawn, it's a new day and it's a new life for me and Thielen. Jimmy Thielen is the new man in charge at Pitaudry. Um, I'm sure we're all excited to get behind the Swede as he makes um, his journey over in June to become the next Aberdeen manager. And back to the podcast for the first time for a while. Um, now that he's paid me for Player of the Year, probably after Cormac's paid him for his finder fee, Callum, welcome back to the show. Hello, thank you. It's good to be back. I hope you've not missed me too much. Um, I, it chaotic even getting in here. I had to ditch the PC uh, and I'm on the laptop in our lovely loving room, which is yeah. be very busy decorating. Yeah, very busy decorating indeed, but good to have you back on the show. Um, obviously, you can't make Mondays and I know you have been um, missed. Uh, you and Grant nominating you for director of football, given your role in um, nominating Jimmy Thielen. Um of course, as as me and Phil were discussing on Monday night's live episode, you were the first person um, that I remember kind of naming Jimmy. Um, how does it feel seeing a name? Well, I, I'm going to say you banded out of uh, thin air because you probably did do a bit of research into it. But how does it feel seeing a name you nominated now falling into the Aberdeen dugout for next season? I've, a lot of people have given me a lot of credit for this. <laughs> and look, I'll take any credit that comes my way ever. However, a lot of it, uh, I, I, it was an article, and I'm sure the Evening Express posted it, but it clearly wasn't them, because I mentioned it to Ryan Kryle, and he said, oh, you're the first person I saw mention it. So I don't know. I saw an article, and it said he played played direct attacking 4 3 3 and I got excited. So I just thought, that'll, no, that'll do for me. Um, however, I really didn't expect it to get this far, so I'm quite excited. And I've watched the interview, Glenn, so I've done a little bit of research for this one. So, uh, despite the chaotic nature, as is always the case, you can rest easy. Good. Um, well, we'll get on to the interview because, of course, um, those that have Red TV or it's also available on the club's YouTube channel. So once you're done with this episode, you can go and um, catch up on that tonight. Um, or if you're listening on the way to Hamden, when it's a safe place to do so. Um it's quite a good interview. Um, we'll, we'll also speak about the Alan Burrows interview um, that he did with Mal Panton as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, Jimmy said he doesn't know a lot about the club and a lot um, of season ticket holders this evening will also have received an email um, from the club um, with a message from the manager ahead of next season. And one thing that seems evident that he wants to install into the club and kind of get ingrained is that that passion and for me that was the thing that, that came across was um he was buying into the passion from Dave Cormack from Alan Burrows from Stephen Gunn as well and I mean well Dave Cormack's not got to where he is in business without being able to talk the talk and anyone knows of course he's a beach end boy um but I think that enthusiasm from the board is something that he certainly is enjoys at Elfsborg right now um, and that enthusiasm from the board is clearly something that he's bought into and why he was so keen to come here as the next manager. Yeah, and I think that him coming here has brought a lot more enthusiasm back amongst the fans. Obviously, he won't be in charge on Saturday, but I think there's a little bit more of a feel-good factor about things which might might help things. I think it eases fans' nerves as well. Um and it'll be very important. Another important thing that's been mentioned, uh, and I've seen a lot on social media as well, is patience will be required. And Alan Burrow has mentioned that as well, where you know things didn't get off very, very well when he joined Elfsburg originally, but their board were patient with him. Uh, and then he, he was very successful with them. And I think that'll be the case as well. Um, it's easy to say, be patient. Uh, however, I actually do it once, we, once the time comes around, and I'm very guilty of that as well. Um, but I think it is something that, that we will have to do. But I am very, very excited. Um, it's something new. It's something fresh. Uh, it's exciting, the fact he's coming from abroad. But at the same time, he's done his apprenticeships, essentially, ahead of this this kind of job, um, which will not be an easy one, given the state we are in right now. Um, but I am very, very excited. And I almost weirdly think, should the Scottish Cup not, not go all as we hope, the 
cup group stages might be a nice little way of, of, of helping to prepare for the season. That could potentially speed up the process ever so slightly. I know with recruitment, he has to get his own players and things like that as well. Mm-hmm. But the fact it's competitive action in games that we should be winning, but it's better than friendlies, could help get us towards sort of where we want to be next season anyway, slightly quicker, you would hope. You would hope. Um Evening to Ellie and Holly Slesser tuning into the show tonight. Um, Sam Gordon saying, you know, certainly seems to be respectfully departing Elfsborg, boding well for um, when, if he ever leaves us on, amicably that is. And I think that was something that, that I took away from the the interview that, that, that came out um, last night. I, I listened to it this, this morning and um, that <clears throat> I kind of get the feeling he's not going to be here before June because he wants to to honour out that that contract um, and probably if he is here before June there's probably going to be a, a, a big fee to pay mm. um, but I think that's a really interesting point you make about the kind of group stages if we don't obviously go on to win the Scottish Cup and that opportunity for um, competitive football at an, at an early stage and I really liked kind of the way he, he talked in about you know getting the players in and getting them to learn his ideas but also the importance of having some of the current staff involved now obviously the club have only so far named Peter Levin um, as someone that's going to stay on as an assistant coach whether we see any of the others remain on Um, I'm wondering I'm kind of more looking towards the sports science center like Graham Kirk of course on the backroom staff there and if they'll integrate and again he kind of says how important it's been for him in his mind, to have people with fresh ideas, of course, um, Jimmy Thielen coming in along with his two assistant managers, but also having um, some of the current coaches, and that'll help the integration for him um, coming across. So <clears throat> kind of interesting piece there. Are you, you know, I mean, Phil discussed this, but obviously good to have you on tonight, Callum. Are, are you happy to see Peter Levin staying as part of that coaching cell? Yeah, I definitely am. I think it helps the transition period ever so slightly just having someone who knows is able to give some pointers if they're unsure or or, or if they need a you know a, another opinion that perhaps has a better under, understanding of things i think peter levin will be able to give that um peter levin also very experienced coach anyway so on on that merit um alone if he, if he was coming in with that sort of pedigree i'd be very very happy the fact he's here the fact he's got his experience with the players um, they will always they already have that understanding, and I think as that sort of go between be the between the very new um, ex, ex, ideas and coaches um, coming in, and and the players that are already there and will be there next season, whoever that may be, Peter Levin's almost that good kind of buffer there uh, as mm-hmm. well, and um, certainly uh, in his job as well that he's been doing uh, since he's been in charge and um, on interim interim basis. So far, I've been pretty happy with it as well. I mean, it's not not an easy task whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So the fact he's staying on, and he said he wanted to be Aberdeen manager one day too, just <laughs> not really right now, although his hand's been a little bit forced there. Um, perhaps maybe we're going to have a ready-made replacement in him with a few years under Jimmy Thielen if he, go, if, if he is to go after a few years. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully it's a, a long and prosperous career, of course, for, for Jimmy at, at the club. You obviously speak about the players transitioning through to next season. <clears throat> for those certainly tuning in tonight that maybe listened to Kel Rose's pre-match press conference, that was another prickly press conference for the Dutchman, um, batting away kind of questions around his future. I mean, if ever uh, an interview signalled a player that's not going to be here next season, it really felt like that interview from, from Kel. Um, there's a lot of content coming out on Red TV actually um, over yesterday and, and today. Really feel I was getting my money's worth recently. But Pedros say, say, 73 saying, we as supporters have to calm down, step back and allow Jimmy to build a team that we can be proud of. Come on, you Reds. <clears throat> and I think that is a thing that me and you <laughs> absolutely will um, need to do. Um I know Scott Burns highlighted uh, Johnny Main's tweet uh, about giving him time. Um, And I think patience really, and look, it's easy for us to say right now, and, you know, if we get off to a terrible start next season, we might need to revisit this clip. But we do need to give 
Jimmy time when he comes in. It is going to be a, a transitional summer. It's going to be a rebuild. All those kind of key phrases that really felt like they were banded out last summer as well. But this is a new manager working in a new country. That's the first time he's taken a job outside of his, his homeland. There does need to be a degree of, of patience from the, the fan base, doesn't there? And there seems to be a degree of patience coming from the board for those that, that listen to Alan Burrow's interview on Red TV. He emphasizes the fact that, that Jimmy's been in that job at Elfsborg for you know six years. It took him 18 months to kind of transition the squad to where he wanted it to be, to, to fit the style he wanted it to be. So next season, I mean, ultimately we want to be as high up the league as possible, but there could be bumps along the road. I mean, it's Aberdeen Football Club. There's bound to be bumps along the road. Um, however, yeah, it's very important that that people stay patient and, and it will take time. I mean, right now I'm thinking of Hibs fans kind of calling for Nick Montgomery's head when he's had one transfer window, really, um, to, to try and improve things and, and implement his, well, getting his own players to implement his preferred style. Um that's probably something we we we'd have to avoid that kind of thing and a period of stability, not volatility, as as Alan Burrows um, mentioned, would certainly be welcome. And um, you know, like think of Barry Robson; he had a massive rebuild really on his hands. And um, when he came in with so many players on loan previously, and um, Jim Goodwin certainly wasn't happy with with the state of the squad when Stephen Glass came in. Um, and then since by Robson, I mean it's been an absolute, it's been a whirlwind of chaos. Is how I can describe it. So some sort of stability, the patience will needed uh, will be needed for us for us to get there. But the fact that the board are talking about it and are aware of that kind of thing suggests that they will not only back him but are willing to be patient and give him, you know, a, a few transfer windows at least anyway. And if then things maybe aren't working out, then perhaps then that's time to pull the trigger, providing it doesn't go completely disastrously, mind you. Um, but it's encouraging, and I think it's what we need because we've been in absolute shambles for about three years uh, now, and and just having, you know, a steady hand uh, at, at the at the wheel of the ship would be more than welcome. Yeah, more than welcomed indeed, and a stability much needed. Where do you then feel on this comment here from from Dan D, who says, "I think it will be easier to be patient as he has a proven track record of improving teams and players. He also has a clear philosophy, but also has flexibility if he sees his number one idea isn't working. Do you think the fact that he has that record from, um, and I'm going to really not pronounce the team he was at before Elfsborg, but then also Elfsborg in." In slowly improving them season upon season, <clears throat> does that buy him time with the Aberdeen support and more mm. importantly, probably the Aberdeen board as well? Yeah. Do you mean John Choping Sandra? Oh, you have been doing your research. Yeah, there you go. The only reason I know, I know pronounced John Choping is because a friend of mine studied in Lynn Choping. I didn't know I'd say that at the time, so there we go. Sure. Um, but yeah, I do agree with, with Dan D's comment. There is reassurance based off his previous track record. Um, and essentially, I think we're all thinking if he's able to replicate that, and it, it will take time if he's able to replicate that here, then we'll be more than happy. Um, but the fact there is evidence, the fact he's got years of experience of, you know, sort of, well, a little bit different, I suppose, but similar, a club in a similar state to then building them up to where they are now, the fact he has that behind him and he's got previous is certainly encouraging for me and provides that sort of reassurance. And, um, you know, it, it's obviously different. He's coming to a country he's never managed in before and things like that. But it's football. The fundamentals are the same. Um, <laughs> and he's he's got experience, which is, is another encouraging thing as well as it being sort of a bit fresh and exciting because he's not from the regular managerial merry-go-round, essentially. Yeah, and I think you know he's obviously got experience of competing at the right end of the leagues, which is is key. But he's also got experience of managing in Europe because he's taken Elfsborg into uh, into European football as well. Uh, Mister Slash Ten saying, I "Think we all know that this is, of course, another gamble, but it's an exciting one." Um, of course, I think it certainly feels the majority of the support are in favour or um, excited, uh, as Mr. Slash 10 refers to, um, the appointment of, of Jimmy Tillian. But 
there are going to be an element of the support because that is the nature of football. There are slightly more reserved on this appointment, slightly apprehensive that we've gone out with the norm. Do you understand why there would be an element of our support that kind of has that viewpoint and there might be that little bit of pressure from sections of the support that are unsure of what this appointment is going to lead to? Yeah, I can understand it. It's not my nature because I often just get carried away with things. Um, however, I can understand it because it's not it's not a safe bet, essentially, because it is someone who's never managed in Scotland before. You don't know how someone's going to react to that, I guess. Um, you know, Neil Warnock, for example, probably came up, thought he was going to absolutely piss it and just do what he did does in England and steer teams to safety rather easily. Very different up here. Um the fans obviously certainly play an aspect, uh, uh, play a part in that as well. Um, but I can understand why people may be a bit apprehensive. But for me, just looking at, you know, his history, what he's done with Elfsborg, um, it just gives me that reassurance. And then I allow myself to get carried away and excited because if we can't get excited about this, about a Swedish man coming over to, to take us to Europe, then, um, then what can't we get excited about? It's football. You know, we've been miserable. Let's just, you know, have some belief here. It's going to be fine, guys. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm surprised you've not launched um, HMS Piss League yet. Um, but I suppose we better wait for this season to to finish before we we do that. Um, Graham Gibbs saying fans will be patient, provided progress is obvious. Last three managers were stubborn in ignoring the obvious and sealed their own fate, which I, I think is a fair assessment of the, the last three managers. You could almost include some of the interim managers in there as well. Um, but, you know, kind of on that point about progress is obvious, I, I'm interested to kind of think about that because what progress is obvious because it could be slow progress. So would slow progress still kind of afford Fan patience? <laughs> um, probably. I think if if we don't go on sort of horror show runs and there is a clear identity there um, and, you know, he seems a good problem solver and he's not just throwing the same shit at the same wall and none of it's yeah. sticking, then that would be encouraging. Um, see by Robson 5 at the back uh, for, for a lot of the time. Then, then that's probably... Probably enough. I don't know what I would consider looking ahead to next season as um, sort of reasonable enough progress as like the minimum expectation. Have you have you thought about that at all? Well, I don't know when, when we were kind of speaking about it earlier. I feel right now that progress from where we are currently would just be making the top six because we haven't kind of been near enough to, to getting that. Um, I know we've maybe been flirting with the top six, but it never really felt we had any conviction to follow through and, and execute on, on that. Mm. I guess the kind of success we've had in the Cups this season domestically it is going to be a difficult one for him to kind of go up against. So for me, he's probably going to be judged more so on the league, but also fans will be hoping for similar Cup runs to the that we've had this season I think the biggest issue that we're going to have is how quickly he can get players in um over the course of the summer and that's something certainly that um Alan Burroughs seemed to seem to refer to in his in interview was that the, the kind of importance of getting this deal done sooner rather than later yes we had to be patient was because the club are trying to attract players that those players those agents are waiting to see what manager that their client is going to be under so you know I'm not expecting us to suddenly start announcing players for next season now but again when you listen to the interview that that Keller Rose did um, pre-match he personally said for him feeling in or out was not a factor in his decision which for me said a lot um, but it could be a, a decision for someone like a Connor Barron, for example. Maybe a far stretch thing. It could be advantageous in keeping Boyan Miofsky. I think the offers we get in terms of money will be be different. But having a manager that plays a certain style of football can influence signings and also the retention of the the, the current squad. So 
I, look, personally, I think if we just start get, getting into the top six and then we see where we are, you know, it's easy for us to sit here and say, look, he should be getting us to third because that's where we expect to finish. I think we have to be a little bit measured and a little bit realistic that the squad is going to need a lot of work and how much of that squad are going to be able to buy in and play to that style um, remains yeah. to be seen. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think for me, just in terms of, you know, a bit of excitement, uh, but also trying to temper my expectations, you know, I do agree we're not going to be immediately up there with, with third hearts. We'll have done it two years out of the, the, the last three. Um, they'll have more money coming in from, from European football again next season. Um, but top five and some sort of European qualification, I think, would be enough like enough steady progress mm -hmm. from where we are because realistically, somehow, we weren't even miles off it because come the end of it um, this season. I know Kilmarnock and St Mirren and Dundee are going to look to go and kick on once again from where they were um, where they've been this season, uh, and rightly so. However, with the sort of funds available to us and the type of the type of player that we can perhaps attract, um, they're probably going to be lessened by the fact we won't have European football. But probably when you then turn to the finances, should be above the likes of Kilmarnock, Dundee, St Mirren. Um, so I think similar. Situations in the cup, not even finals, semi-finals, competing, or you know, if we get knocked out in the an earlier round by Celtic Rangers, I'm not going to be hugely pissed off. Um, <laughs> and then, sort of fifth qualifying for some sort of European competition, I would be absolutely delighted with. Or even if we don't get that, if there is clear style, it's working, and maybe he's not been able to get in all of the the players that he would like then that's absolutely fine with me, as long as there's some sort of progress. But the recruitment thing is a little bit of concern for me, um, just in terms of the fact he's not coming until June the 1st. Um, teams are already probably doing, or hearts have read, already done some business. Mm. Um, how What happens? I mean, between the end of the season and June, does just nothing happen? Or are the head of recruitment going to be identifying players? And then once Jimmy's in, does he then say yes or no? Or are we already then behind in that case? A bit of a concern for me, but nothing too major, I suppose. Well, the way I look at it, between his start date, which I think will either be the 1st or 3rd of June, more likely the 3rd of June, given I think elsewhere play on the 1st of June, our last game um, is in Dingwall on the 19th um, of May, hopefully the 25th of May at Hamden in a Scottish Cup final. So really you know, end of season, worst case is two weeks, kind of a, a rest period. Best case scenario, he's got eight, nine days. So how much, if we currently had a manager, would work, how much would be going on in that kind of space of time? Um, so he does, he did highlight that there is kind of a short turnaround between him coming in and pre-season. So maybe it's in the forefront of his mind um, kind of what needs done over the summer. Obviously, some of you tuning into the show tonight have been leaving your thoughts on what progress means over the course of next season. Graham Gibbs saying it'll be higher than ninth in the league table. It's also going to be a team trying to score rather than keeping possession. Jack McTavish saying anything better than this season, a top six if we can as well. Um, and a couple of points um, as well. Dandy also saying, just remember how Big Ange started at Celtic, losing a few games before the first round of fixtures were complete. But once the players understood what he expected, the improvement was vast. Again, yeah. that's probably something that we need to remember. But of course, kind of going back to what you said earlier, Callum, Ange didn't have the via play group stages to contend with, which of course we could. And that could be a, a little bit of a, an advantage to get the style across in the, the early um, stages. Jam Ultra saying no team should expect, in inverted commas, third either. That's the competitive part of this league and that's what makes it enjoyable when there's a good Dons team and decent Edinburgh teams. And we're also on course to have two Dundee teams um, mm. in the league next season as well. Of course, it's... It's an appointment that's probably attracted interest across the wider Scottish footballing network as well. Um, 
those on social media will have seen, of course, the clip from PLZ um, Soccer today. Um, Peter Martin, of course, a guy that unbelievably was employed to um, compare the Champions of Europe dinner and um, Gothenburg Greats anniversary, is yet on his own show, um, bumping his gums. And he's done a good job because we're now speaking about it now and getting the clicks. Um, by questioning why Aberdeen have gone ahead and appointed a manager when his argument was the likes of Malky Mackay, Neil Lennon and Stephen Robinson probably had better credentials than the man we've now appointed instead. I mean, I didn't watch it. I saw what people were saying about it, however. <laughs> and um, that's that statement there is just mental, isn't it? I mean, hey. you know, Neil Lennon, who's been out of work for a pretty decent amount of time. How's that better credentials than a guy who's who's taken a lower Swedish team up to the top of the table and fighting at the top of the table and unlucky not to win the league mm-hmm. um, recently too. How's that any better? Malky Mackay, who was doing so bad at Ross County, he got sacked and is a racist <laughs> bigot. I mean, <laughs> mental. Um, I just don't understand. And you say Jack Ross was the other one? Uh, Stephen Robinson. Stephen Robinson, sorry. I have seen people mention Jack Ross, however, as well. And he's on a cushy job at Newcastle United as as like <laughs> head of youth academy or something like that. Head of youth coaching. There's no way he's going to leave that <laughs> because I imagine he's getting paid pretty handsomely. Stephen Robinson can understand a little bit more, um, I guess, than the other two slightly. But once again, there's that concern of, you know, you can do it at someone like St Mirren but the Aberdeen job might be too big for them or the pressure might be too much like we probably saw with Jim Goodwin. Um, so there, there's there's that as well. But he's at least the more reasonable of the shouts. But I think just of a St Mirren manager, again, I'm just, yeah. ne- never, never again. It worked once in our time. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that now. <clears throat> now, of course, um, Jimmy becomes only the second foreign manager um, to manage the club, second after Ebi Skovdal. He's the first Swede to manage the club, so we've got a Swede to manage a few neeps in that squad as well. Sam Gordon saying it will really be a-, a testament to his player improvement, seeing what he can do with the likes of Shaden Morris, Ryan Duncan, and of course, Jane Richardson currently out on loan. Um, interesting to see what chance those players are afforded over the course of the summer into next season. But one thing Jimmy Thielen has a good record on is developing players um, of a younger age. Um, Elfsborg having that model, similar to the, us, um, developing players and then selling on for profit. How much do you think, of course, the we've got the, the youth team in the Scottish Cup youth final coming up mm-hmm. at, the, at the end of the month as well. How much do you think those players will be excited by the ar- arrival of Jimmy and hoping to impress him over the course of the summer? I think they'll be very excited, um, given his track re- record at Elfsburg. I think one man who should be certainly excited is Alfie Bavage, mm-hmm. um, doing well at Kelty Hearts, consistently has done well with the Aberdeen youth team and Scotland youth teams as well. And with a our, poten- our number nine potentially leaving. Um, I keep trying to say potentially as if uh, just to give myself some hope that he's going to stay. Then there could be a spot there for him. Um, and even not as you know, the, the starting number nine, but within the squad getting regular game time, that should be encouraging for him. Um, so Jam Ultra mentioned Vicente Bissauen. I am really hoping that this is the time where a new manager comes in He'll have just come back from playing regularly in the Netherlands, scored a belter of a goal, which I know you probably mentioned, but I'm going to bring it up again. Um, I'm hoping the fact he's coming in and he's not just been punted out when the manager left and we got a new one, so then he was not really in, in the picture when he came back from loan. I'm hoping it's a chance for him. Shaden Morris, um, there's little bits of a player I see there. Perhaps he could be, he could be someone that maybe Jimmy Tellen can work with and sort of fine tune those that those bits that are lacking in in the final third and not play him at right wing back or right back. That would be good for a start too. Um, Ryan Duncan alone would probably benefit him. I feel like and Jaden Richardson I completely forgot about and I actually thought his contract was up at the end of the season. But no, we've got him till 2025. So you never know. Um, there might be hope for him yet, but it's a chance for them to impress and that might get the best out of them too because it's someone with a complete fresh slate 
uh, as well. So oh, if that can't get the best out of them, I'm sure um, Jimmy won't hesitate in replacing, providing he is back. So that would be nice. Yeah, I, I think the, there'll definitely be the backing um, given out to him. It looks like you weren't the only one that's forgotten about Jane Richardson, judging by the, the comments as well. Um, in terms of the interview that, that Alan Burrows did, um, proving that he wasn't an AI figure uh, in the boardroom for the other week and kind of busting some other myths that were were thrown out from his previous interview with, with the club, um, he, he spoke about how well Jimmy interviewed back um, in, in January of, of last year when he made the trip to Scotland and spent a few days here through the interview process before the club ultimately um, appointed Barry Robson um, after, of course, his successful interim spell. Um, but I guess good things come to those who wait, um, just have to experience a bit of turbulence in between that waiting period. But, you know, Alan Burrow's saying it's testament to his desire that despite that, previous rejection he still showed the level of enthusiasm and desire to to get here are you just glad he did do that is there a little bit of frustration you know obviously hindsight a wonderful thing that we didn't pursue that earlier um i guess maybe time will tell if that was the right or wrong decision yeah i mean first of all i'd like to say it's a bit of turbulence uh whilst you're waiting for, for something good is that jay and phil whilst they're waiting for me to come back uh, <laughs> and i mean there's no real frustration i guess Um i suppose well I, thinking back it would have been impossible for barry robson not to be given the job with the way it went in the end and i admire that jimmy didn't sort of hold it against us and just go you know f you um mm. in addition to his sort of respect for elsberg and, and the way he's leaving them rather than jumping ship completely um i think the fact he is you know, he's probably determined to come here and show why he should have been given it in the first place, and which I think can only be can only be a good thing. And um, so I, I don't I don't I don't mind it at all. And we've we've got there in the end. Good things comes to those who wait, and we hope that that's this. And another thing I want to mention on on, on Jimmy as well is in the interview um, he did with Red TV, the fact his granda spoke to him about mm. Aberdeen FC and now he's now he's ended up there with when when we had Sir Alex and um, that just you know maybe it's meant to be it's written in the stars yeah um he's kind of gone full circle I suppose so hopefully he brings some success that his granddad would be be proud of and uh, one final thing then before we we wrap up Callum um of course discussing the news that Jimmy Thielen is going to be the new Aberdeen manager and the kind of excitement of course that a new manager brings of course, when he joins, the transfer window will be approaching open. Who knows if it will actually be open. But what sort of area should he be looking to identify straight up? We know the kind of 4-3-3 formation that he wants to play, looking at the, the long diagonals, teams that favour that, that high press as well. Andy Wright saying we need a whole new midfield in his eyes. We're far too small and slow. I hope he signs some big Viking lads. Do you think he will look to to bring over um, players currently either with him at Elsborg or in that Scandinavian market? Um, but what area would be your first kind of cause for concern that he needs to address in that playing squad? I think I do agree. The midfield, we've been a bit sort of power up at times getting bullied in, in, in the middle of the park and that's the kind of thing you can't afford in this league how many games are, are won and lost in in that midfield and um, so I, I certainly agree I mean you're probably looking at but if Bar Barron goes then you can have McGrath and and Clarkson as your two creative players then you've got Shinny and Povara and you probably need at least one more in there. A holy midfielder that we've not replaced. A big bastard of a lad I would absolutely love. And maybe someone in there with an engine too um, would be would be nice. I mean, we could sit here and talk all night about places we need to need to need to sign players. I mean, probably a right back, probably a left back, probably a centre back, um, goalkeeper, midfielders, probably a striker. Uh, and wingers as well. So it's, you know, you could be looking at a whole new starting eleven once again. And um, I'd certainly be interested. I think shopping in a market that he knows initially would be would be a good start and might help that transition period as well. And you're probably able to get a much better deal in terms of both transfer fee and wages coming over from sort of Scandinavia than, for example, 
League One, League Two jobbers. Yeah, true. So Sam Gordon basically summarising you there, saying, in other words, sell Abdi. Um, I think the musical box is spot on defence and keeper first, then move on to, to midfield. I think, as, I, as I've touched on that interview from, from Cal Rose, for me, signals um, he'll be departing. I'm actually going to be interested to see if he's there next week, Callum, because, of course, he didn't attend the Player of the Year event last year, I think, although Nadine was maybe pregnant at the time, but again, same this year. So interesting to see if he uh, turns up um, this year or, or not. But a keeper probably is probably going to be one of the biggest priorities um, for us this summer. Um, and I think, you know, we've seen this season how we, we've been defensively and the, the, the sloppy goals we've conceded. So if we sort that out first, then we can we can pitch forward. And hopefully we've got some some money coming in. Um, unfortunately, that does mean losing Boyan Miowski, considering we potentially will lose out on some sellout sell on clause from from Lewis Ferguson after he suffered that unfortunate injury but look there's going to be lots of for us to get our our teeth stuck into over the the summer once Jimmy comes um over to Scotland we might even see a return of the undertones on the tannoy for those of a certain age like myself that will be the the song of your childhood when the team kind of just proceeded coming out um, to, to get the, the team going. So really looking forward to the start of, of a new era um, under Jimmy Thelen. And I wonder as well how much now that the, the kind of announcement, I know you jumped the gun because in your determination to win a five-year season ticket um, and failed. Um, re- I didn't even re- know that. I didn't know someone else had won. For oh, well. Surprise. Um, you renewed your season ticket early, but I just wonder now that there is that stability and an and announcement how much we will now see fans committing uh, into next season, of course. Um, the club now uh, announcing the uh, kind of promo video for, for season tickets about being part of it, being part of Pataudry. Um I know I'm certainly still waiting till the, the end of May because I'm looking at potentially moving and getting the wee man his first season ticket as well. So holding off slightly, um, but definitely the enthusiasm for, for next season is is burning all, all already because that, that flame for this season, dependent on the result, of course, this weekend, um, feels like it's it's burning very, very slowly out. Um, but lots to be excited for. So if you have enjoyed the video tonight, remember to, to leave a like on, on the video, subscribe wherever you've been listening or, or watching and Callum it's been a pleasure getting you back and hearing from you again Thank you very much, I really hope that it's more of a regular occurrence going forward probably once we hit summer we'll be able to work things out and it'll be basically reacting to news coming out whenever it happens So, um, hopefully between now and then I'll be able to, to pop on a couple of times however Yes, we'll definitely get you back because we've, we of course during the summer we'll need to get the, the Callum Wright transfer rumour market um, going over again so where Callum plucks names from thin air and hopes for the best much like he did with Jimmy Thielen and look how that's worked out so thank you very much for tuning in remember like the video subscribe follow do everything enjoy your weekend we'll see you next week <laughs>